Yes, sir. Give me uh, John McCormick. Thank you, sir. Uh, we're having a little war with our beloved friend Mendel Rivers. Yeah, I'm, I expect him in here in the half an hour. Well, uh, we've talked to about 280 people, and we haven't found 10 that disagree with us. And uh, what I would like to have, if I had a loyal Democratic chairman, our loyal committee would be to have a moderate, reasonable understanding. Uh, the, the desirable thing would be that would require the president to notify the Congress. It takes well, I us. Got, I got the memorandum you sent. That's to right. Now wait. The office. Now wait. Yeah, wait a minute. Let me tell you. That would be the de most desirable. That's what the lawyers want. Now I've overwritten the attorney general and all the lawyers, and I'm willing to take the 30 days. Uh, like you have in the GSA Act. That meant we had a weaker president that took that. But it's already been done for the rest of the departments, and I see no reason why it shouldn't be done for the Defense Department. So I agreed to what I sent you in that memorandum, but I'm not going to agree to any more. If he wants another veto, and he wants another funds impounded, and if he wants to take me on, and the Admiral of Charleston uh, Navy Yard, uh, I got if he wants a war, he can have one. Now, he's just been, he, he's been playing with McNamara. McNamara doesn't know how to fight. But I've got a good sharp knife, and I'm going to cut off his Peter. John, tell him this now. Just tell him that he, he's, he's getting too big for his britches. But I'm going to cut off his Peter and puck it in my pocket, as Mr. Rayburn used to say. And I served with Mendel a long time, and I don't trust him as the greatest tactician. And he's already damn near ruined me by ordering to bomb Peking. And now those congressmen got to have some responsibility. I don't care how much seniority they got. They're Americans. And a damn fool that's out here advocating bombing Peking ain't got no business being chairman of a committee. He ought to be removed. Man ought to be expelled that advocates bombing Peking uh, with a situation as terrible as it is right now. And so you're just going to have to talk to him. If you can't do it, I'm going to send for him and talk to him myself. Now, I talked to him night full last night. He, he was so thrilled because I'd signed his pay bill. Oh, he said, we'll work this out. said, I don't want any trouble. I want to get along with you. I'm ready to do it. But they tell me they've met with him three or four times this morning, and he's just trying to rave and rant and throw his weight around. And, uh, Did you talk with him the other night? Yes, sir. He's one of the first men I called. And I said, to, I've got two bills here. I'm going to sign one of them. It's wrong to sign it. It cost us $600 million. And you ought to go gone down that well, and Carl Albert ought to, and uh, Jerry Ford ought to, and you ought to say, this is fiscal irresponsibility. But we went ahead and passed it unanimously, 414 to nothing. It cost us 600 extra million, and most of it's wasted. It doesn't go to the people it ought to go to at all. It goes to people that we don't need in the service. We need the specialists, the electronic people. But I signed that bill and I told him so. Now I said, on the other one, I can't go along with that because you ruin the whole defense establishment. I'm just not going to ruin the country because even if the, ha the Congress, the House, and the Senate don't know any better. Now most of the Senate didn't even know what was in the bill because they didn't have anything like this in the bill. This was the, the, the crazy committee over there. So when I talked to the senators, I haven't found a one of them that even knew what was in the bill. And that's a sad thing to say, but that's true. And I've had 15 men calling every member of the House. And we've had Pike and Shelf and one other guy. I've forgotten the third one. Uh, but just about his IQ against it. But I called Mendel, and Mendel said, Oh, Mr. President, we'll work out something. I said, Now, I'm saying in my message that I, I'm not against a reasonable notification. I'll, I'll do that. Now, my attorney general says that's the president ought to do that. That's bad. But I'm going to do it anyway to try to get along with you. But I'm going to send 30 days, and I'm in. I want to oh, I said, we work it out. We can work out something. We can work out something. Now, this morning, uh, McNamara, I got him out of a joint chief staff meeting. Now, we we got serious things these days. 
We got no time to be messing around with a nut from Charleston, South Carolina, Thurman or Rivers. But I got him out and he says, well, uh, we've argued with him all day and said, uh, if you, what do you say, Mr. President? I said, you tell him 30 days or go straight to hell and I'll veto whatever he sends me. Because I'm elected and I'm gonna be president while I'm elected. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to put a fight with him right in his own damned house, and then I'm going to go to court in some of these ridiculous, irresponsible statements he's making, and you're all going to have to get a baseball bat and wake up up there and work on him, because I, I can't take this uh, Mendel Rivers, Frank Boykin, everything made for love, and go to bombing Peking and, and doing fool things like this. I like Mendel, but I just can't. Uh... I have, did, he, did he advocate for bombing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, hell yes. He's got us every intelligence report in the country. Scares the hell out of every ally. The British government's about falling. They just read these extreme statements that that uh, damn fool like Rivers or Morris makes, and they ought to be careful. We got Marines that are dying out there every hour, and they they don't understand what their folks back home are saying. Let me read you what one of them just says over the ticker right this second. He said uh, it's from Hamilton, New Jersey, AP. 146, you ought to clip it off your ticker. I feel sorry for those Americans who are saying the Viet War is not their war, wrote Marine Sergeant George DeLucio of Hamilton three days before he was killed in the war. If you ask the fighting men who are there, the tragedy of Vietnam is indeed necessary. DeLucio wrote his sister-in-law and her husband, Mr. William Ecker of Folsom, in the last letter he ever wrote. If China takes about South Vietnam, she has control of the Indian Ocean. And from there, she can put her tactics into Africa, into Australia, and Japan. And she can just keep moving, said the Marines. If we don't stop them now, Georgie and Mike, Georgie and Mike will be fighting 10 or 15 years from now. Georgie is seven and Michael too, our delicious son that he was talking about, his own son. When I read or hear about those demonstrations back home and the people saying this is not their war, I just plain feel sorry for them, he wrote. Well, so, you're in excellent shape throughout the country. Listen. Oh, I know, John. All I want to give you the information, so. You, you, you're, you're, have no trouble on the house. Uh, but John, let me tell you something, my friend. You, the speaker, I've seen Mr. Abram call in people and say, now listen, this far and no further. I've seen you do as majority leader, this far and no further. I sat down there in that board meeting and heard you all say, we got to stop this. Now here's what Rivers said last week in New York. Quote, you want to write it down? Yeah. I, I marked three little dashes under that, uh, to underline it, will accept nothing I will accept nothing but total and complete victory in Vietnam. But total and complete victory in Vietnam. Who the hell is I? Now what? What meat does this Caesar feed on, John? Now, the House of Representatives, you've got to protect them, but somebody, we can't protect them with damn fool stuff like that going across the world on the tickers. And right at this moment, I'm trying to negotiate agreement. So they better keep their mouth shut and go on, and, and if they don't want to give us an army, turn it down. Well, if they want to give us 600 million. As far as I'm concerned, I've completely backed you. All right, you bet you are. Now, what I want you to do is just, uh, you just, you and Carl, just get a hold of him and just say, now, we're going 30 days, period, and if we got to fight, let's fight. Okay? Sure. All right. I expect